Hello everyone, my name is Catalyst, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the fourth episode of Battlefield Breakdown, a series in which I analyze elite Battlefield players' gameplay and explain why and how they are able to perform at such a high level. First of all, I want to apologize for this video being a week late. I unfortunately got sick last week before I could make the video, and obviously this series requires I do a lot of talking, and I would have been very hard-pressed to do all this talking in a nasally congested voice, so to save your ears and to likewise save my throat, uh, I pushed the video back. But the episode is here, and we are going to be talking about Jordy 1-1, or Jordy Today. Before we get started, just a quick reminder, the way the YouTube algorithm suggests content is based on how much you interact with it, so if you you enjoy this type of content and want to see more or want to see more of me in general make sure you subscribe and interact with the video in some way when you are finished with it such as liking or commenting so you don't miss any future uploads or announcements as a short rundown of how this series works, if you're new here, the players that will be featured in this series will all be content creators as they are the most accessible for people who want to watch more if they want to. As always, you are free to recommend players in the comment section below. As of now, all of these creators are active on Battlefield 5 as it is the most recent game and offers the most to teach and learn. And finally, this is not a conversation about who is the overall best player, but instead is a series that highlights certain things that players do exceptionally well. And today we are discussing Jordy and how specific Specifically, his patience and smooth gameplay allows him to outplay his opponents. Some of you watching the video today may not have heard of Jordy before this video, and especially in comparison to some of the other content creators that we've already featured on the list so far, he has not been an active content creator for as long and doesn't have as big of a public profile, but that does not disqualify him from being a part of this series, and I hope that by the end of this video you know exactly who he is and why he is so talented. Long before Jordy was a teammate of mine on Venom, I had heard stories of Jordy from within the Battlefield competitive community. He had a reputation for being a ratty player, for lack of a better term, somebody that hid in unconventional spots and bushes and head glitches to surprise and outsmart his opponents, and while playing with him and against him plenty of times, I found that more or less to be true. I remember one specific example in which we were playing a T8 Squad Conquest scrim against Complex Simplicity, and Jordy hid in one of those toilet outhouses that you can find on some maps, mainly Province and Merida, and waited for the entire team to all push past before opening the door like Shrek in the original movie and killed every single one of them. I've got a couple of clips today, both competitive and public lobbies, that I really want to show off and I think show some of my favorite qualities about Jordy's playstyle, mainly how he just makes everything look so effortless and easy and there is genuinely a very calm demeanor about his playstyle. Battlefield is one of those games that at times can be very conflicting in its pace. For every reason to play fast, there is a countering reason to play slow, and the players that master when to be fast and when to be slow will generally speaking be the most successful, and I think that Jordy's pacing is a big key as to why he is so successful, and it's something that is so difficult to do well. It can sometimes be a mere difference of seconds between getting a multi-kill and getting overwhelmed and killed. That life or death timing is perfectly on display here in the opening part of this clip. When Jordy kills the first player in the distance with the FG-42, he has a decision to make based on the information presented to him. There is nobody on his minimap. Obviously, we're playing Domination on Panzerstorm, so teammates, or enemies for that matter, could be hiding in any kind of bush. And the FG is more often than not a fire and reload on repeat type of weapon, so Jordy has to reload here no matter what. But does he continue to push forward towards the flag, or does he wait in cover to reload? Obviously, he chooses the latter and then gets a big spree of kills. If Jordy had pushed forward, he would have gotten ambushed by the same group of players peeking that direction while he was reloading. But because he decided to wait, he heard the gunfire in front of him and adjusted accordingly by pulling off this spree of kills. Sitting and waiting for information like Jordy did here is a simple yet difficult task. I know that's a bit of an oxymoron, but going back to what I said about the pacing of Battlefield, the instinct is oftentimes to just rush and go search out enemies because the maps are so large and react accordingly, whereas in watching Jordy for so long, he does the exact opposite most of the time. Jordy is an expert at letting the game come to him, putting himself in good positions to succeed, as opposed to falling victim to something that everybody falls victim to, which is rushing for kills and putting yourself out of position. It's a hard task to do for anybody, even for Jordy, and we all make this mistake, but Jordy does a good job at minimizing that mistake as much as he can by taking the extra seconds to be patient and absorb information. 
Jordy also displays some good target prioritization and spatial awareness skills here. He takes out the assault player first as opposed to the two snipers, and while killing the last player here, he hears somebody pushing quickly from his right, so he quickly turns and kills that player with extreme accuracy before coming back to his original target, which has only just turned around to see him. He then pushes up and catches another player off spawn here and gets shot in his back. I feel like we always talk about how to use smoke on Battlefield Breakdown, and yet here we are again talking about smoke, but in this context, kind of similar to how Enders used smoke a couple of times in the last episode to get away from an enemy shooting him in his back, Jordy does the same thing here, in case you thought I was talking out of my ass last episode. Instead of turning to shoot and find the enemy, Jordy instead moves his way into the smoke and is able to kill the more prominent threat in front of him with some nice strafing movement. And to end the clip here, this is kind of cool. In case you think I was bluffing about my original point that pacing is important, we see the polar opposite of what happened at the beginning of the clip here. Instead of waiting to reload, Jordy reloads while running and moving forward so he can beat the enemy player to the head glitch. If he had stayed there and reloaded like he did at the beginning of the clip, he would have had to take a disadvantageous gunfight while he was regaining health. It really is the moment-to-moment -moment decisions and mere seconds that can sometimes decide between life and death. Now, it's one thing to do these things against public lobby players, but the level of outplay is taken to a whole nother level against experienced competitive players, and I have a few clips of competitive here to show off some other good qualities of Jordy's gameplay. For context, both of these clips are T4 Rush, which allows one person of each class on a team of four people, and it's important to know that because it dictates how you push in the game mode. The first clip here is going to showcase off some movement, which we also talked about in the episode featuring Max Seek, and if you Remember from that episode, we talked about movement in the context that you are not just trying to outplay your opponent with your movement, you're also trying to outplay your opponent's aim assist. So movement on console in many ways, even though it's also important on PC, is really important in the console gameplay loop. Jordy does a really good job of pushing his opponent off the head glitch here and does a good slide to avoid damage while he pushes the enemy off the head glitch. Jordy is going to win the next three gunfights. Sorry, that's a bit of a spoiler for you, but he's going to win these next three gunfights strictly because of his positioning and movement. The context here is huge because the enemy that he had just killed first is now out of the kill cam and is in the bleed out stage, which means that he can't see exactly where Jordy is anymore and Jordy uses this to his advantage. So when he is hiding in the quarter here and he takes some grenade damage, that sniper that is rushing in with a pistol doesn't know exactly where Jordy is and it's an easy gunfight for Jordy. I kind of want to say that Jordy intended to take some damage with the grenade to draw in the enemy, but I don't think I would be able to justify or convince any of you that that's actually the case and not the fact that grenade indicators are harder to see than a speck of dust sometimes. Regardless, Jordy slides out and surprises the third player and then goes back to the corner to get momentum and jump peek the final player and achieve a team wipe. Great positioning and movement in a very, very tough situation. This second clip is brilliant. Just brilliant. Uh, Jordy knows that there are two people in the garden here, and they are watching both entrances. We see that at the very beginning of the clip. So Jordy does a little parkour move here and hops up to the only angle that they couldn't possibly be holding and gets the kill on one of the players from the attic. And this is just so genius. The enemy team has got to expect that Jordy is still around the window or the doorway. He was probably called out in that position, and they directionally hear the gunfire coming from that direction when one of them goes down. So the second player here has no idea that he is actually above them and that's why he decides to check the doorway instead of the attic and Jordy just simply slides out here cleans up the rest of the team this is one of my favorite clips from Jordy because he takes the time to understand where the enemy is and how best to outplay them and he does just that the final clip today is something I would consider prototypical Jordy gameplay. It's very simple in the end, not much is done. In fact, he hardly moves from this spot, but as we've talked about a lot today, Jordy is an expert at letting the game come to him as opposed to searching out enemies all the time. Combine that with lethal aim and a calm demeanor, and that's the recipe for Jordy's gameplay. We've seen a variety of playstyles on this series so far, from Baranox's aggressive twitch aim to Ender's game knowledge that allows him to outplay his enemies and Max Seek's decision making, but I think with Jordy, he sets a good precedence that you can have a simple playstyle, but be very mechanically strong in the game and still do very well. You don't have to have the best aim or know the most about the game, but if you play calm, collected, and practice, you can do great things. 
Jordy isn't on any insane head glitch here. He is hiding behind a defilade that is just big enough to hide his body and allow him to blend in with his environment. And he picks off multiple people, letting them all come to him where he can control his surroundings instead of pushing up and getting killed. And obviously this is Operation Underground, so everybody's coming right at him. And if Jordy were to be super aggressive and push up, he surely would have been overwhelmed and killed. And again, not to drive home this point too, too hard, but it's not like Jordy isn't being aggressive either. Look where he is on the map. He is the furthest player up on his team, but his pacing is so good and he understands where he needs to be to be successful and he doesn't have to do too much that it allows him to take on more enemies than any one player realistically should be able to do. No backflanks needed, just good aim and patience. And in the end here, the thing that gets him killed is something that's not really his fault. He gets shot by a sniper that has the spotting perk, so he is spotted instantly when he gets shot. And his 3D spotting is what gives him away, and he is killed by the player in the train. But not before getting a large sum of kills. Smooth gameplay, lethal accuracy, good pacing, and a calm demeanor. And you've got one really good player. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Battlefield Breakdown. Who would you like to see me break down next? Comment down below. I would like to thank Jordy for collaborating with me and sending me what I needed to make this video. The links to Jordy's YouTube is in the description. If you would like to see more, Jordy streams every day and posts regularly. As I explained at the beginning of the video, interactions really help with videos like these. So if you did enjoy it, make sure to like the video. And if you want to see more from me and stay up to date on the series, make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications. I stream myself four nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so follow me on Twitch if you are interested in watching those. Once again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Catalyst. I will see you all next Friday with another episode of Battlefield Breakdown, and I will see you all another time. <laughs>